I'm Kusha Karvandi, and you're listening to Exerscribe Radio, the source for biohacking your health to reach your full potential. I created Exerscribe to provide people with a roadmap to working out. With our new workout app, you can get a custom workout program that adapts your workouts to your body type, goals, sleep quality, stress levels, and personal preferences. With live chat support, our workout app has become so comprehensive some call it a personal trainer in your pocket. Our users are seeing over 90% success rates with their goals because we take the neural approach to fitness, meaning we integrate movements and exercises that recalibrate your brain and body to prime you for rapid strength gains and fat loss. Check out the Exoscribe workout app in the iTunes app store today. In today's podcast, I interview author, trainer, coach, and transformational musician, Paul Hoffman. 22 years ago, in the grips of what seemed to be an insurmountable drug and alcohol addiction, Paul had gone from being a successful multimillionaire to hitting rock bottom, searching for his true identity. His pain was so life-threatening that Paul did the only thing he knew he had to do. He made the decision to turn his life around. Day Sculpting grew out of Paul's desire to empower himself to do this by focusing on creating daily success behaviors. He is dedicated to helping people create their life the way they truly want it to look like. Paul empowers his students to create their life one day at a time, focusing on the present rather than being stuck in the past or wishing for the future. Paul teaches principles on how to produce success by helping people create a mindset of success. He calls these momentum mindsets. He has trained both large groups and one-on-one situations, successfully helping people achieve success in every area of their lives. Paul's purpose is to inspire, educate, and empower people to take action and participate in their chosen vision and dreams. Today, he'll teach us how to shift your consciousness and energize your soul to follow your passion. Hey everyone, we're here on Extra Scribe Radio with transformational musician, speaker, author, and teacher, Paul Hoffman. Welcome, Paul. Hey, Kusha. How you doing? Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Awesome. So just to get started, could you tell the audience a little bit about you and your background? Absolutely. Uh, I'll do the uh, the short condensed version because I've had a very colorful background. Uh, and I know Kushi knows some of it as well. Um, so I, uh, I'm i in the personal development world. world. I, uh, I'm a, a coach, trainer, author, uh, and uh, I teach people about mindset, how to create mindsets of success uh, in whatever area of life that you're trying to do that in. Um, my background is, you know, in my earlier years, I went to college on a basketball scholarship uh, and then um, um, realized that once I got to uh, Division I college uh, that I needed to up my game, uh, but I didn't have the uh, dedication to do that. So I quit school and I uh, got a job uh, as a tour manager for rock bands. Don't ask me uh, how I got into that. I just kind of fell into it. Um, I had, you know, never done any touring before. And... Uh, a couple of bands I work for, uh, bigger bands, were a band called Emerson, Lake and Palmer and a band that probably everybody's heard called Pink Floyd. And, uh, and so I did that for six years with them. And then, uh, and then I kind of uh, decided I was going to go back to school and get a law degree. So I went back to school um, and was um, uh, going to NYU, studying very hard, getting great grades. Uh, and uh, my brother, who was, uh, used to be a recording engineer in the jingle business, which is music for advertising, was working at a company in New York, and they were looking for um, a second salesman. Uh, I was actually living in the city. Uh, and so, um, you know, I was really focused on my studies, but I, you know, I said, what the heck, I- I'll go and talk to them. So I ended up going to talk to them. And since I was going to school two days a week, I... Um, I ended up going to work for them three days a week as a salesman, and actually I started to do really, really well for them, although I really wasn't into the selling thing. I was more into the creative aspect of it. And uh, make a long story short, uh, I became their executive producer, got them uh, some really big major accounts like you know Burger King and McDonald's and uh, Ford and Kodak. And, uh, and then my brother and I decided we were going to um, start our own company. Um, so he, he and I left, started our own company. Um, most of the clients came with us. Uh, and uh, then he and I had a little falling out. And in 1981, I um, um, started my own company. Uh, and uh, one of the first uh, big accounts I did was uh, uh, a, a little song I wrote for Ford, which is Have You Driven a Ford Lately, which is in the Advertising Hall of Fame. Most people know it. 
It, uh, it ran for eight years. I made a lot of money. And um, along the way, I acquired a great cocaine habit. And I just tell everybody that because I want to be totally transparent. But I was spending about $2,500 a week on cocaine for about 15 years. It almost killed me. And, uh, and then uh, after I um, took care of that habit through rehab and all sorts of different programs and stuff, uh, I finally got on this path of, uh, of personal and spiritual growth. And uh, it's gotten me to where I am today. So I get to, uh, I get to help people, um, you know, create the life or, or, as I say, sculpt the life that they dream about. And uh, I'm just very blessed to be able to... Uh, to work with people uh, as uh, as smart as Kusha is, and uh, and other people that both he and I know, and uh, you know, so I'm on a path of uh, of transformation, and uh, and always uh, trying to transcend, you know, the the negative limiting beliefs that all of us uh, have in our some subco- subconscious mind, which a lot of times we're unconscious that we have them, and um, so I teach people. It's, uh, it's like I have this metaphor. So my whole pro- uh, process is, is, again, sculpting your life. And, uh, and it's kind of like when Michelangelo uh, looked at the block of granite and uh, um, he saw David in it, uh, the statue of David. And all he did was he took everything that was in the way out of the way of the vision, which is what we need to do in life because the biggest obstacle to success is yourself. Okay, I'm my biggest obstacle to success because of through beliefs and habits and so forth. And uh, so I teach people that every day they're getting up and they're sculpting a masterpiece known as them, and I help them do that. Wow. You inspire me every day, Paul. You inspire me too, bro. <laughs> you know, I can't wait till you and I do the stuff that you and I are talking about doing. Exactly. That's going to be powerful. So tell me more about uh, Sculptations. So I am... Um, Sculptations is uh, one of my products in my suite of products. It's a, uh, it's a brain entrainment technology. Now, if, uh, many of you maybe have heard of uh, uh, binaural beats, which are uh, frequencies that um, are um, um, akin to the five different brain entrainment levels. So there's alpha, beta, theta, gamma, and delta. Those are the, the uh, five different brain levels. And basically, binaural beats are frequencies that are set for each of those different areas. And, uh, and about, I don't know, six years ago, I kind of got into, you know, I've always been a, a meditator, but I, I kind of have my own way of meditating. Um, and I mean, there's so many different ways to meditate, but the most important thing is, is I really call it tuning in. I tune in every morning to what I call my super mind, you know, that place within me that holds my highest good, my highest potential, and, and I try to access that so that what I'm going to create that day is done in the most powerful way possible. So I'm empowering myself by tuning in every morning and, you know, I'm inspiring myself and, and so forth. Because, you know, every day, you know, there's two things that go on constantly in, in our minds. Um, I mean, this is for everybody. You have this, you know, little small voice, which, you know, is called your ego, which is telling you you can't do something. And then you have this big voice of possibility, which is telling you you can't. And they're both talking to you at the same time, you know, and uh, I'd be surprised if there's anybody listening to this that didn't understand that because, you know, the, 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 the trick to be able to get to where you want to go in life is to be able to quiet the little small voice and always begin to listen to the big voice. So about six years ago, I, um, I um, was working with a partner of mine. Uh, we, we had created a program called Sonic Access. So it was a sound healing program. And... Uh, and uh, in creating that program, uh, we, we stumbled uh, across this concept of taking binaural beat frequencies, which, you know, everybody, there's a lot of people that use it, but we added two other elements to it. We added a heartbeat uh, and a breathing pattern. And what happens is when you put all those together, they activate the four holistic intelligences. And so, um, so we took that, that technology and then um, I write this really, uh, one of my gifts is writing music. I have a, a, another company called Success Songs, which are songs that inspire people to take action in their life. And I've written them for many, many uh, top people in the personal development world, including Harvecker and Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen, Brendan Burchard and others. Um, but I took the, uh, this, this concept of this music that I write, which is very rhythmic, melodic, uh, uh, sensual, um, and so it's not new agey um, or, or, or very languid, and there's nothing wrong with those kind of things, except that I just don't do that. So I took this high-frequency music, and I um, embedded my, uh, 
in my brain entrainment technology, which I call MRT, which stands for multivariate resonant technology, very, very fancy, dancy, scientific word. And, uh, and I've created this program called Sculptations, which helps you to tune in to your supermind. And what my take on how to do that is when you, when you're, you know, if you're sitting there trying to quiet your mind, you're not going to be able to really do that unless you, you know, lived in, you know, the Himalayas for 30 years and you are some yogi that, you know, maybe hasn't talked for years and whatever. But, you know, your mind is always going. You know, there's always some dialogue or some stuff going on in your mind. So it's not about really quieting your mind, as I say. It's more about tuning in. And so um, creating this kind of music that I create uh, then gives me the opportunity for um, my process to be a whole mind body experience. So once you get your mind tuned in and you get your body to, to be in alignment with that and you're, and you're moving as well with it, then the, the whole combination of the mind and body begins to activate your spirit. And then you, if you do it correctly, then you're so totally focusing in on what it is that you want to do. So with sculptations, we have them in nine different areas of life, including what's called Good Morning, Great Day, which is, helps you set up your day. We have them on Sharper Focus. I have one called the Advanced Millionaire Mindset, which is about changing your money blueprint. We have one on Love and Intimacy, Creativity and Inspiration. We have one on Sleep. It's called Good Night, Sweet Dreams. And uh, we have one on Confidence. It's called Unstoppable You. And so that's kind of how um, um, the whole sculptation thing um, came about. And so... I I um I will I do them in all different uh, all five different brain levels brain brain entrainment levels, and one of the things that Kush and I are working on, which is going to be really uh, amazing, uh, and hopefully we're going to get that out to you guys as soon as we can. Um, but we're working on one. I've always had this concept of being able to do one that had that had um, the whole physical activity mode involved. So you know, working out to brain entrainment, which is shifting your brain so that you not only uh, dial into your workout and your health regimen, if you will, because it's a, you know, working out is one thing, eating right is, you got to do that too. Um, but dialing into that and to be able to help people truly focus in on getting and being in their most optimal health. That's awesome. Man, this is some next level stuff. Absolutely, bro. You know, it's really interesting. I, I think, uh, like many people, it, my mindset was uh, I definitely had a lot of limiting beliefs for, mm -hmm. for definitely for a long time, and I think uh, like many people with limiting beliefs, I was probably too logical for my own good, and um, and, and when you're very logical and you don't use that creative part of your brain, you become a, a big skeptic. You know, I was always skeptical of this concept of law of attraction and that you know the whole movie The Secret, and um, and all the all these things that you're talking about. I was always skeptical. I'm like, ah, oh, that that can't be real. You know, is that really is that a gimmick? You know. Like most people, and and uh, and then you know when I started opening up my mind to these things and and really um, tuning in, like you were talking about, I really actually started seeing a physical manifestation. I started seeing a difference. Um, for example, I watched I actually did watch the movie The Secret the other day. It was like probably a couple weeks ago, and it, it was interesting because the first thing it did for me is I after watching it, I became more aware of my patterns. I started thinking more about you know how do I respond to situations, and I actually was surprised at how negative that my subconscious would get about certain things. If like if I was expecting to get, you know, an email back from somebody about something important and I didn't get it back, I immediately I noticed that my response was like, oh gosh, this, this isn't gonna happen. This whole thing's not gonna work out. And so uh, instead I thought about that movie The Secret, I thought about Law of Attraction. I thought, no, no, I can't do that. I gotta think about, you know, because all that's gonna happen when I think like that is I'm gonna draw more stuff like that to my life. So oh man, absolutely, I it and, and absolutely. It, it was crazy. Interesting enough, the very next day I got exactly what I wanted. You know, exactly what I was you know really um, thinking about and anticipating. It was like the universe drew it to me, and, and it was like magic. It was crazy. Yeah, that's because you stayed open. You know, you said some some. You know, you, the example that you gave is, is a great example, bro. Because you know. We're human beings, man. You know, we, we're sitting here. We've got, you know, beliefs and habits and, you know, patterns, which I, you know, is something that I, I constantly look at every day. And it sounds like you do, too, because once you can identify your patterns, then obviously you can change them. Once you identify your habits that aren't, aren't working for you, you can change them. Once you, you know, you know the circumstances that are holding you back, then you can change them. But the thing about, about that whole idea of, you know, we're humans and we want things the way we want them. 
And so, you know, like you say, you write the email and, 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 you know, you write it and go, oh, great, man. You know, I can't wait to hear back. And, you know, it's like, you know, in probably 20 minutes later, you're going, wait a minute, they didn't write me back yet. You know, exactly. because, because we, you know, we have these expectations. And so I tell people expectations are always going to create disappointment. So, so what you do is, you know, like what you did, you, you send it out and then you kind of like, you, you kind of noticed, notice, cause that's a big part of, of, of being able to change your, your behaviors. You got to notice where it is that you're trying to sabotage yourself through a limiting belief subconsciously. Excuse me. And another thing I really liked what you said was you, you use the word respond and, and that's a, such a powerful word because most times when things happen in life, People do one of two things. They either react or they respond. And so you don't want to react because when you react, then you're coming from an emotional standpoint. But when you respond to something, then you're taking responsibility for your behavior and your action. So one of the things that happens in life is when, when things aren't going your way for whatever reason you think they're not going your way, don't react to it. Just respond to it and, and check in, tune in and find out you know, why these things aren't happening. Because, you know, again, everything that happens in your life, and I know you know this, Kusha, everything that happens in your life is a direct result of some thought, a belief, or action you've taken. Exactly. Uh, it's 100% true. So that's kind of, you know, so, so knowing that, then, you know, you're, you're really able, if you can really be vigilant, vigilant and, and, uh, and determined, you, you can actually create anything and you know when you talk about the law of attraction in the secret um you know the whole law of attraction thing is i mean law of attraction is a great concept but the, the the problem with some with like even within the secret and again you know it's a it's a great movie great people a lot of those people that are in it are my friends um uh you know um the my minister i belong to a, a, a spiritual center in la called agape i'm on the board of directors michael beckwith was in the in the movie the secret and uh um but the whole idea of the law of attraction is it's one thing to sit there and say, hey, I'm going to attract my perfect mate or I'm going to attract the, the perfect job and, 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 and you think about it and blah, blah. What you need to do is you've got to take an action to get it. Exactly. You know, and most people sit there thinking that all they got to do is like will it into the universe. Well, willing is wishful thinking. Yeah, So it's true. I, I was thinking the exact same thing when I watched that because I thought – if you don't have a certain level of hustle where you're willing to get out there and make things happen and take action on those things, then you're never going to see any of these things come to fruition. It's just not going to happen. Absolutely not. Another interesting thing that uh, that you know I was thinking about the other day, I just got my new iPhone. They have this new uh, app on there, the iTunes University, which is pretty cool. It allows you to you know watch some, some different Yale uh, courses and university courses, and so I I just tuned in recently to this Yale University like uh, intro to psychology course, and uh -huh. one of the one of the first courses was all about you know intro to the brain, and it was talking about you know evolution, and, and one of the questions that the uh, the professor posed was you know why do you think that our unconscious mind, the you know the subconscious, why would the unconscious mind evolve, and and the answer he said to that was because of deception. He said you know if you look at the animal kingdom. You look at like uh, apes, for instance. Apes, when they sense a threat, the hair on their chest stands up to deceive their uh, their opponent, so they look bigger. Mm -hmm. He said humans have done the same thing, but they've done it uh, from a mental standpoint because humans are masters of deception. So we've become really good at sniffing out BS. But one of the things I really thought about after watching that, I said, well, we we we've become decently good at sniffing out others' BS. But what about our own BS? Yeah, but what about our own, you know, denial? I feel like a lot of people they live in in this delusion of that they think that they're, you know, some people think oh, I'm working so hard, but it's like you need to sometimes, you know, have this gut check of are you really doing what you need to be doing to achieve the goals you want to achieve? Absolutely, absolutely. That's 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 a great, great, uh, great recognition and understanding. You know, you know, we, um, you know, it, it, there's a lot of times when we're we're always quick. To blame or or or, or claim the, you know the, the whole victim mentality, right? And you know sometimes you do it you know sometimes you do it consciously, and sometimes you do it you know because you know you're trying to get back at somebody, which is obviously not a good energy to be in. But you know sometimes you know it's just like you know we we end up you know unconsciously 
trying to to you know when you say deception you know it's we unconsciously in trying to validate our behavior does that make sense yeah. yeah and so you know and so so i tell you know i tell people you know listen man we're really good at making excuses human beings are really good at making excuses you know and uh and so you know i tell people listen you know rather than make an excuse take an action Okay, because, you know, sometimes when, you know, people, you know, when you make excuses, you're making them for a va variety of reasons. But most of them are there's some kind of a fear based something behind what you know you need to do, but you just don't want to do it. And so so the whole idea of excuses is a really interesting concept. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tying it into your whole idea of deception because I never thought about it that way. But, you know, there's 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 always two parts to an excuse. There's the excuse you make. So that, you know, that's so you don't have to do something or whatever or avoid something. Right. And then there's the excuse you make to support the excuse. Which is the validation part of it. Right. <laughs> and and so, you know, we're really good at, you know, so it's it's like funny, you know, you pose a pose a question to the audience. It's so funny. You know, it's like once you once you kind of get out of your own way and you just begin to like, you know, you know, say say, you, you know, Say you don't want to do something, right? That's actually the perfect time for you to do it, okay? Because once you start to get into the avoidance part of wanting to do things, then what will happen is, is that that will become part of your internal behavior. And since your internal reality is always going to create your outer circumstances, you can't, you can't continue to give yourself permission to avoid what you know you need to do. Wow. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, you, you know, obviously, you know, we've all heard of fight or flight and we protect ourselves and, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, when people want to, uh, you know, one of the things that I've, I've found about, you know, losing weight and I know, Kushi, you, you, you know, you know more about this than I do, but I mean, I know a lot about the mental aspect of it and I know you do too, but, you know, when people want to lose weight, it, it's not about finding the next big fat diet. It's about changing your mindset around food. Yeah. You know, and because everything is mindset, you know, but, you know, when people, you know, if, if you don't really know how to shift and, and flip the switch so that you have new behavior, what will happen is you'll lose weight and then you'll, you'll put it on at some point more because the brain is always trying to find what it loses. Wow. But if you can retrain the brain, I, I call it reset, rewire, recode your brain. So now you're, 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 you're creating new behavior, new habits because habits drive everything then what will happen is you'll begin to see results in your life. And, and once you begin to see results in your life, success becomes easy because, because you know, it's, it's one thing to, to try to change stuff. But if you can actually make small incremental changes, then what happens is those, those good vibes that you get from that build up so that, that again, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, you'll flip a switch and all of a sudden, you'll start to recognize and feel good about how good you are, you're feeling and you're going to want more of it. It's kind of like a drug. You know what I mean? Exactly. No, it's true. It's all about the decisions you make. You know, I, I, uh, I, I listened to this one guy, Dennis Prager. He's got this uh, podcast um, show and he, he talks a lot about like ethics and values and morals and that sort of thing. He's one of these old fashioned guys. And, and uh, it's very interesting because his perspective on human nature is he thinks that human nature is to be bad. And, uh, and I just, I, I can't feel the right to agree with that. I just uh, inherently disagree. And I, I think that, I think that uh, our, our nature is really based on uh, our environment that we put ourselves in. If you surround yourself with, you know, with people like you and positive people, positive energies, and, uh, and then you support that with the right decisions, that's what your, uh, your outcomes um, will manifest. You know, you're, you're, uh, you're really just a collection of, those, uh, of your environment and your choices that you make. I don't think that we have that much pre-programmed in our brains as we'd like to believe. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think that's true. I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you, you know, when you're born, you're brought into the world in a pure state, okay? So, I mean, that's, this is my belief anyway. You know, uh, unencumbered by circumstance, unencumbered by, you know, habits and whatever. I mean, you know, you, you got a clean slate, if you will, right? And then what happens is you start to live life, right? And, you know... Your brain is the most impressionable by the time you're six. And, of course, everything else in your life has a profound effect on, on your beliefs as well. So throughout your life, you know, even up to uh, last, you know, when you wrote that email, you know, you, 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 you kind of try to convince yourself that it wasn't going to work, right? So, 
there's something around that that, you know, obviously, you know, you need to work out and, and get rid of it. Obviously, you do that. But so you brought into the world pure and then all of a sudden some, you know, you start, you know, you're a young kid and, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're, you know, you, all of a sudden you, you take out all your crayons and you start to draw and you're like going crazy and just having a great time. And somebody says, hey, don't do that. Right. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden now you got an impression or an imprint, I call it, which now says that, you know, you, creativity is not good. Yeah. Or something, you know, but but the, at the end of the day, you know, we again, we create um, every belief and every thought and every action that either has a profound positive effect on us or a profound negative effect on us. And one of the things that I think that is an important part of, of having success in your life, and again, I'm not talking about money success, that's part of it, but I'm talking about a successful life, a life that's filled with joy, love, happiness, peace, harmony, you know, um, inspiration, creativity, and whatever, you know, but the the, uh, the the whole fact of the matter is is that when 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 you're able to really be be mindful of your environment, you know, you know your environment being like the people you hang out with. You know, there's a saying that you're an average of the five people you hang out with. So imagine if you hang if you hung out with five people like Kusha, okay, who's who's positive, focused, on it doing some great stuff, obviously your life would rise. But if you hang out with people that are negative, so I used to have this great friend of mine, you know, and I, he would, you know, he would do anything for me and, and I'd do anything for him. And, you know, one day, you know, um, he, uh, I was talking to him and I, I, I said, so how you doing? His name was Marty. He said, hey, Marty, how you doing? He said, man, you know, life sucks, whatever kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I finally heard it that day because he had been saying that for years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I finally said to myself, you know what? I can't hang around with Marty anymore because wow. I don't want to be in that energy, you know? And so I, hang, I, I tend to hang out with people that are smarter than me, that lift my vibration. You know, my environment in my house is when I walk in the door, I feel like I'm in a sanctuary. My recording studio inspires me to be creative. You know, my desk, you know, and the view that I have outside my office inspires me to want to create great content, great products. I'm setting myself up for success. Now, does it happen every day? Obviously not. We all have good days and bad days. And I don't have this pure, pristine life. But I can tell you what, I give myself every opportunity to have a great day. Wow, that's powerful. I mean, that's very hard for a lot of people, I think, to make that decision to say, you know what, as hard as it may be, I'm going to cut these people off in my life and, and surround myself with, uh, with the people that, you know, I want to be more like or the people that will, that will elevate me. Absolutely. And it's absolutely necessary, especially when it comes to health and fitness. If you're, if you're surrounded by people that are, are uh, influencing you to drink a bunch of alcohol or do drugs or eat bad food, I mean, that can take its toll on you when you have serious goals. So I think surrounding yourself with the right group of people who are like-minded and have, have the same kind of vision um, can make a big difference. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, so, it's, you know, it's like, you know, I always tell people the only limitations that you believe are the ones that you make up. And again, I'm tying back into that whole theme of how you create everything that happens in your life. So think about it. If you, if you think you have a limitation, who, who made that up? You did. You know, and the other thing is, so if you want, if you want to change the game, then you got to think differently. And the other thing that you got to do is you got to stop playing someone else's version of what you should do. Yeah, because I tell people, and I and I didn't come up with this. I I found I read this somewhere. I just kind of paraphrase it. You know, you might as well be you because everybody else is taken. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And and know that you know every day you have this opportunity to sculpt this masterpiece known as you. You know, you're a work of art, man. You know, you know, you're, and you're constantly, constantly transforming, constantly looking to do things in a, in a different way, you know, you know, obviously, you know, if, if something in your life isn't working the way you'd like it to work, then the first thing you should do is look at why it's not, but look at it from why it's not from your perspective and your behavior in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can change it because if you know where you are, then you know what you need to do to get to where you want to go. That's true. That's true. You got, you got to have that, that, uh, you know, just that inner self um, recognition. You got to be able to have that identity. Absolutely. 
And, uh, you know, and I always tell people, you know, life's an either or principle, Kusha. You know, and some of you know, people say, wow, what does that mean? And I say, well, it's really not rocket science. Here's what it means. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Yeah, no, it's true. I think especially <laughs> when it comes to failure, I think people, they look at failure in a weird way. They look at it like an identity, but failure actually isn't an identity. It's an event, and it's something that, uh, that's temporary, not permanent. Yeah, and it, has, it, can, it can either empower and inspire you to, to dig down deeper, or it, or it can get in your way, and then all of a sudden it can, it can paralyze you. But, you know, the greatest inventions in the world were done by mistake. So mistake, failure, the same kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's this great quote by uh, Edison. Somebody asked him, uh, so, um, hey, Tom, why did you still want to, you know, invent the light bulb? Although he didn't really invent the light bulb. Tesla did. But anyway, the quotes go, um, so, Tom, you know, why did you still want to invent the light bulb after you failed 10,000 times, right? Mm -hmm. He said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I just found 10,000 ways not to do it. Nice. <laughs> that's good. Right? And that's, I mean, think about it, right? I mean, the only person that can sabotage your success, whether it's in health and fitness or, or business or, or relationship or whatever, the only person that can sabotage your success is you. Again, through the choices, decisions, actions, and beliefs you have. Yeah. So, um, don't do that. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? It's absolutely true. You know, I, I was reading about uh, Sir James Dyson, and uh -huh. he, he had said that he, uh, you know, the guy who invented the Dyson vacuum. Yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, he said that he, uh, he had 5,127 different prototypes of the vacuum before he finally got it right. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. That's, so think about it, right? That's a lot of crumpled paper in the trash can. All right. And it's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of dedication, determination, commitment too, right? Exactly. You know, there's this great quote, man, uh, by this author, his name is Carl Bard, one of the greatest quotes I've ever read. He said, listen, although no one can go back and make a br brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. That's good. I like that. So, again, we, we are in total control of, uh, of, of who we are because, you know, you know, I like to tell people, you know, your mind has a mind of its own. Mm -hmm. And it does. It does. You know? It really and it does. and and you know it has a mind of its own because you're the one who's directing it, and so if you want it to be in go in the direction that you want in life and and to to have those things that you want in life and to and to really you know shine and step yourself up and be a beneficial presence and and do those things that you want to do, then you better really learn how to let go of all the b s that you keep telling yourself and start doing what you want to do. No, it's absolutely right. What would you say some of the greatest obstacles you've had and, uh, and how you overcame them? Well, you know, I mean, when I first started, uh, you know, drugs was a big obstacle, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, uh, did I have a lot of fun? Absolutely. Okay. Um, but, but I had to really like, you know, have take a look at why I was doing it. And obviously, you know, any kind of addiction that you have, you know, you're doing it to avoid something. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, or fill of or fill a void or, or or perceived void, if you will. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, and so you know, once I I kind of looked at it, and you know, I think a lot of a lot of my uh, my early uh, years when I was uh, you know doing drugs and all that stuff it had to do with low self esteem. Now I was highly successful, bro. Right, mm -hmm. I mean I made I made thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars and in, in millions of dollars in the jingle business, and but you know I I can remember. That, you know, um, every time I went to write something, I always would, the first thought I'd get uh, was, oh, nobody's going to like this. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, this idea of low self-esteem, low self-confidence, I mean, but, you know, and I had to push through it, right? And so that was, th those are big obstacles until finally I said to myself one day, you know, I think it was about maybe 10 years ago. And... Uh, Again, you know, I, I don't know, I was at, something was going on in my life and, uh, you know, I had another opportunity to look at it. And, uh, and I, was, uh, uh, I was working on a song, uh, um, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is about six years ago. I was working on a song for a guy named Harv Ecker um, for one of his courses. 
his, uh, his Millionaire Mind Intensive, and the song was called I've Got a Millionaire Mind, right? And I remember sitting down to write the song, and I remember I had that first thing, that first thought again. Somewhere it came back to me. Like, oh, is he, I hope he likes this. And, he, you know, and then I finally said to myself, you know what? And I said, why don't you, t- t- you know, stop. I took stop. I took a deep breath. And then I kind of went back, and I did a... Um, um, I did a little uh, uh, memory, I call it a memory review. And I think this is a really good tool. You know, so we have, we have good memories, bad memories, um, positive memories, negative memories, whatever it might be. But, but what I did back at that time is I kind of went back into my memory bank and I, and I connected to a memory, uh, a memory of, of, of how I was, I've had, I had great success in writing songs and, and really visualize what that looked like when I did it, and I said, wait a second, man, you've done this already. People love your stuff, right? So where are you getting this? What, where is this thought coming from? So, you know, going back to access positive memories will, will because, you know, everything's stored in your subconscious mind anyway, will help you work through any of those kind of challenges. You know, I've had challenges, you know, in relationships, man, you know. Um, I've been married, you know, uh, you know, I've been divorced. Uh, my ex-wife and I are great friends. But, you know, that, that was, you know, kind of a defining moment because, you know, my, my belief in marriage is, you know, you get married, and, you know, you got to stick it out. You know what I mean? But sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't pan out because, you know, you both kind of go on different paths. You know, sometimes I've had some business things, you know, that uh, things didn't show up the way they wanted to show up. And, you know, it's so funny because when things didn't show up the way they wanted to show up, yeah, I got down on myself. Yeah, I kind of like, you know, felt less than and so forth because, I mean, it's just a natural reaction. But the truth of the matter is it's like you and your email. Things turned out even better than I thought they would turn out. Yeah, that's you know? true. And, uh, and so it's... Um, so, you know, those are the kinds of things, you know, you know, I was, I mean, when I went to college on the basketball scholarship, you know, I mean, I really wanted to be a pro, pro basketball player, whether or not I could, who knows, but, uh, you know, but, you know, when I got there and I, I remember, you know, so I was really good in high school, right? And uh, so I get to uh, get my scholarship. I go to, I go to uh, the first day of practice at a division one school mm-hmm. and, and I, I go to practice and, and I look around and I say to myself, these guys are good. Mm-hmm. Right, and so I had to step my game up, right? Yeah, and and I didn't, and I and it, and I was disappointed in myself for for a little time, right? Mm-hmm. But but you know those are the kinds of things, and uh, and again, you know, I think you know uh, I'm I'm the kind of person that you know once once adversity kind of shows up in my life, then I'm uh, I'm going to look at you know why it shows up, what's my part in it. And how can I make this transition really quickly to get back on on track? Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I mean, I love the stories. It's uh, it's really powerful the way that you know you've you, just your journey. Yeah, it's, really, it's, it's really inspiring. Thank you, man. You know, you know, you inspired me. I remember the first time I met you, man. We, you know, it was like uh, this guy knows what he's doing, man. <laughs> so, so which is which is why I'm excited to do something with you. So exactly, it's going to be powerful. Yep. So where do you get a lot of your information from? You know, how do you stay on top of all this stuff? You know, I read a lot, man. I'm, I'm a perpetual learner, right? And so I, uh, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of uh, reading. Um, um, you know, I've got a great library of books. And a lot of them are on the brain and a lot of them are on behavior. Um, and, uh, you know, um, and so I'm constantly, constantly looking for new new information you know and plus I, I belong to uh, some great mastermind groups with some very smart people that uh, that I learn from you know um, and uh, and I think one of the things that really helps me Kusha is uh, um, I never think I know it all <laughs> so that's important it's really yeah. important and so that's kind of how I do it and uh, and I have, uh, you know, uh, I don't watch, uh, you know, I mean, I, I have a TV, a couple of TVs. I don't watch a lot of TV. I, I, I actually like to watch sports uh, and, uh, and a, couple of, uh, a couple of cool shows on, uh, on Showtime. But, uh, but I spend a lot of time, uh, you, know, you know, watching, looking, uh, following certain people. I have, you know, four or five different mentors I like to follow. I'm always looking for... Uh, for the you know the next thing that uh, that uh, um, that I can uh, either adapt or uh, or um, share and you know th- those kinds of things. 
That's awesome. Are you, are you reading any books right now that you would recommend to the audience? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm reading a few. Uh, and hold, hold on a second. They're actually uh, in my gym bag um, because, you know, when I do my cardio, I, uh, I like to read, right? So I'm reading. I, I, I'm the kind of guy that reads about four or five books at a time, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so the books that I'm reading now, they're funny. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you six books. One's called The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. And uh, it's just a great book about, uh, um, you know, inner power and, 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 and uh, concepts that can help you become, uh, um, uh, you know, just a, a much better person. Then I'm reading a book called Subliminal, How Your Unconscious Mind Rules Your Behavior, right? Mm-hmm. Then I'm reading a book now uh, by uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, which nice. is a really... Really good book. That's awesome. And then I'm uh, reading uh, a book called The Wisdom of the Enneagram. An Enneagram is an eight-sided thing, and and it's it's the complete guide to psychological and spiritual growth for the nine personality types. And then uh, the last book I'm I'm reading is uh, called Mastermind. Uh, It's written by a a lady named uh, Maria Konnikova. She's a psychologist. And it's uh, in the books about how to think like Sherlock Holmes. Nice. I like that. Right, and then for fun, I'm reading a book called Inside of a Dog: What Dogs See, Smell, and Know. I'm a big animal guy. I love animals. I used to have two Australian shepherds that are now in uh, doggy heaven. I have two cats that are sitting behind me, looking at me, and uh, so uh, uh, you know. And I have this uh, idea and this concept that I'm going to eventually do at some point, which is to uh, write really high frequency music for animals. Nice. That's cool. Because you know, because you know, because my my uh, my dogs have always and cats have always been around music. Because you know, I got a recording studio, right? And That's pretty uh, brilliant. That's you cool. know, I, and I know they they they're around me because they love me. You know, but but I also know that you know, I know that when I play certain stuff, you know, in the frequency and the high in, and the, the vibration of it, I know. I mean, animals are freaking smart, man. First of all, they teach you unconditional love, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and then. Uh, but they're, uh, they're very, very, very conscious beings. I don't care what anybody says. Man, that'd be great if you could you know, write a song that mellow my dog out so he stopped chewing on all my stuff and biting me. There you go, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, have the, uh, I, have the, I got the URL, I don't know, about five years ago uh, called Pet Grooves. Nice. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, I'm going to do it at some point, bro. <laughs> that's awesome. So, you know, it seems like... Uh, there's a lot of good stuff we talked about today, and there's there's um there's a lot of noise out there that I think prevents people from taking action because they get this analysis paralysis. So, what's one simple thing you would recommend our listeners actually start with today to improve their overall quality of life? Well, you know, I'll go back to the whole idea of um, the big voice, small voice. Um, again, just be always consciously aware that you're you're. You're always communicating to yourself. We're always communi- communi- communicating to ourselves. I mean, you know, at 5 to 11, I'm communicating to myself about this interview. You know, see, I hope I give him what he wants. I blah, 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 blah. And then finally I said to myself, you know what? Shut up. It's going <laughs> to be fine. It's going to be fine. You know how to do this. And, and, and you know, whatever. And so, so I would say, you know, be always mindful of what you are listening to from an internal dialogue. Because that's going to, again, create your outer reality. So, you know, if, if, we, if a negative thought comes in, you know, uh, 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 swap in a positive thought. Okay, so I think the first thing is, again, really being mindful of, of um, your inner dialogue. That's one thing. I'm going to give you a couple things. The second thing is, you know, check your environment out. You know, where are you, uh, wh- you know, where are you playing in a way that that is less than who you know you are and you're or you're playing small and if you're you're hanging around people that uh that you know bring you down or that don't that don't add to your life you're going to have to cut them loose and give yourself permission to do that because your environment is 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 uh is paramount to making sure that you are uh 
um, uh, going to be doing the things that you really know that you want to be doing. And then the other thing that I would say, the last thing is, is that, you know, um, whenever you're ready to make an excuse, take an action. Whatever that action might be, excuses will 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 paralyze you and sabotage you. Don't do that. So you know, know that anytime you have resistance to doing something, that's the perfect time for you to do it. Okay. Now, you know, if intuitively know you you know that you shouldn't do something, that's different. But to but trying to avoid something because you know of some of some limiting belief or something, you know. Uh, if you can, if you can decide to just m put, you know move through it, then what's going to happen is it's on, when you get to the other side, you're going to surprise yourself in miraculous and surprising ways. Wow, that's some powerful stuff. I love it. Really, really good stuff today. Um, where can the audience learn more about you? Oh yeah, you can find more about me at a couple of places. Uh, you can go to uh, um, the Success Creation Institute uh, dot com. Uh, or you can go to a sculptations, that's S C U L P T A T I O N S dot com. Uh, both of those places. And, you know, if you, uh, if you care to give me your name and email, uh, of course, I'm very conscious and aware of that. Uh, you can, uh, get a couple of free things from me. And, uh, and, uh, my email, uh, is, uh, I always give my email out every time I do an interview because you never know if there's that one person out there that needs some help and guidance. My email is Paul at success songs s-u-c-c-e-s-s-s-o-n-g-s dot com feel free <coughs> excuse me to email me with any uh any uh thing or anything way that i can help you and uh just put in the subject line uh you know uh kusha kusha's podcast so i know where you came from and uh that i can get back on it awesome really really good stuff today i'm i'm pumped up i'm motivated I know I'm going to have a great day and a great weekend thanks to this uh, podcast episode. So I want to thank you again, and, uh, and you know, hopefully I'll get to see you soon. Absolutely. So much love, everybody, and thanks so much for being here. And, uh, and uh, kudos to Kusha because, you know what, he's somebody that needs to be in your environment. <laughs> nice. Thank you. All right, mate. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye now. If you haven't already, Get your custom workout program by downloading the Exerscribe app from the iTunes App Store today. Mm -hmm.